Chinese lawmakers are one step closer to finalizing a new safeguarding national security law for Hong Kong. What do the details reveal? What's the sentiment on the ground and what's at stake between China and the United States? And India is stepping up efforts to fight a surge in COVID-19 as reported cases top half a million. Given the country's early lockdown, why is the virus still rampant? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. July the 1st will be the 23rd anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule. On Sunday, China's top legislature, the National People's Congress Standing Committee, began a three-day review of a draft law on safeguarding national security in the Hong Kong SAR. This is the second review of the law in less than two weeks. Lawmakers have called for prompt efforts to adopt the law targeting secession, subversion of state power, terrorism and collusion with foreign and external forces to threaten national security. The United States said it would impose visa restrictions on Chinese officials related to the legislation. China, in response, said it will retaliate. So what are the sentiments in, in Hong Kong at the moment and what would be the consequences if the U.S. followed through on its intervention. Joining me for the discussion from Beijing via Skype is Professor Wang Huiyao, President of the Center for China and Globalization, a think tank, and from Hong Kong, Chong Siu Wai, Senior Lecturer at Hong Kong Baptist University. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So, uh, first of all, Mr. Chong, let me go to you. The International Credit Rating Agency Standard & Poor's last Friday affirmed its long-term and short-term issue credit ratings on Hong Kong. The outlook remains stable and the transfer and convertibility assessment is unchanged at triple A, the agency announced in its, later report, in its latest report in Hong Kong. What does that mean as to the level of confidence the markets have in uh, the region under the imminent adoption of this new law? I think this shows that the international business community give a confident vote on Hong Kong's future, at least in terms of the investment sector. The Hong Kong dollar is packed with the U.S. dollar, and the Hong Kong dollar is very strong recently, not only because of the U.S. Uh, quantitative easing, now we use uh, the word uh, flooding with all the cash coming out f through these uh, uh, programs to rejuvenate the economy in the U.S., but also because the uh, Hong Kong stock market is very attractive. Many hot money came to Hong Kong because of the big uh, Chinese firms which was lifted, listed in the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. They are moving back to Hong Kong to have the second listing, and uh, that shows the confidence here uh, with the international uh, investors are very high because people uh, from the United States investing through Hong Kong on these Chinese companies and they have a very good uh, expectation of these companies to do better in the future. Mm. That shows that Hong Kong's uh, overall structure is very solid. There is no panic and uh, no investor withdraw from the uh, Hong Kong stock market. That's very interesting, uh, Mr. Wong, because that seems to contradict to what a lot of people are reading on the international media, uh, which amplify, which report extensively about the uncertainty, the worries, the concerns that people in Hong Kong or international business people have about the future of Hong Kong under the new law. Uh, why such discrepancy? Exactly which side really knows the pulse of things that are, to, that are going to, to come, happen to this, um, to this city. Well, thank you. Uh, I think the business uh, knows very well. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, the business community is really all cheered up for, for this new law. And also the uh, three million uh, petitioners uh, actually from Hong Kong, which is, uh, which is an incredible number, almost half of the population of Hong Kong, uh, actually uh, uh, positive about this new law. I, I think there are some worries uh, legitimate because in the last uh, year almost uh, we see uh, uh, enormous damage of the Hong Kong uh, free uh, financial center status uh, 
throughout the year we, we see uh, a, a demonstration violent uh, you know and also uh, ventilations and uh, and also even a storm like that just go and and pulling uh, 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 gasoline on the, on the bystanders and things like that so so can Hong Kong cannot be chaotic uh, or really out of order uh, like any any in any country would not be uh, tolerated and also uh, you see that the block of the Hong Kong airport for for many uh, many weeks so so I think now finally people got a relief and uh, and the uh, uh, uncertainty and the stability will return and that's really uh, uh, really uh, 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 about the livelihood and uh, and, uh, and also right. the prosperity of Hong Kong right. so, so that's very important I think that you're always coming up well yeah certainly uh Beijing and uh, the people who support this law believe so. Now, the draft law uh, was first reviewed from June the 18th to June the 20th, and now it's under second review. Professor Wan, what do we know uh, that is happening during this second review? What are the most important issues to be discussed? And uh, there are speculation saying that uh, possibly this new law would be adopted before July the 1st, which is the 23rd anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule. Uh, what, are you, what can you tell us about that? Well, I think it's certainly uh, it's, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, urgency of uh, restore uh, law and order uh, back in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, central government actually, uh, according to the basic law, has the jurisdiction over the def national defense, diplomacy, and uh, also security as well. I think this uh, law uh, uh, going to be passed by the National People's Congress is going to be, uh, you know, it's already second reading. It has been intensively discussed in the last few days, and I think it will be act uh, very soon, uh, so just in time to, uh, to celebrate uh, 23 years of anniversary of uh, Hong Kong return to mainland. I think it's, it's quite uh, understandable, given the, uh, we've seen a chaotic situation for the last year in Hong Kong, and we see also uh, some of that uh, happening in the U.S. as well. So law and uh, and uh, and uh, order is really uh, important right. for the prosperity well, and the security of Hong Kong. Yeah. Well, you would say uh, the Chinese people attach a lot of importance to symbolism, right? Because it would be a significant day, or a, a, a significant coincidence that the, the new law uh, is um, becomes effective on the day of. Uh, of a new year, let's say, uh, another anniversary of Hong Kong's return to Chinese rule. But some people would say, well, you want to have that coincidence, so you rush the law through. And in order to do that, it didn't really take uh, people's opinions, um, especially the opposition's opinion, into full consideration while drafting this law. Um, Mr. Cheng, how do you look at that kind of concern and accusation? I think uh, there are two kinds of opinions which have been uh, very loud in the uh, local media here in Hong Kong. One is supporting the uh, national security law and uh, calling this the uh, final blow to the uh, rioters, uh, and, uh, rioters and also the separatists and all these kind of way of thinking and actions. The other uh, point is uh, some of the uh, 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 so-called democratic camp members uh, protested this, saying, especially from the legal uh, uh, fields, from the uh, associations, bar associations, and uh, they mainly uh, hit on the technical terms because some of the people, although we have never seen the uh, entire content of this law and uh, the specific stipulations on uh, what kind of crimes would be punished from uh, what kind of, uh, with what kind of punishment. Still, uh, these people say that uh, there are words reported by uh, some people who got to know this law, saying that, uh, for instance, foreigners, uh, people holding foreign passport, are not supposed to uh, be the judge who to, to handle these cases. And so uh, some of the lawyers are just on the technical grounds. But uh, one of the uh, People's, uh, National People's Congress deputies said uh, there is no, actually no need to consult with those people who oppose this law. Uh, I think he's 
uh, view is very uh, important uh, representing some of the people here in Hong Kong because they think since those people opposed to this law, whatever you discuss with them, they don't would, uh, they would not accept because they want to uh, stop this legislation. So most of the time okay. uh, is consulting with the people who have some certain ideas who would like this law to be more effective. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wang, very briefly, how do you strike the balance mm -hmm. between uh, thorough deliberation, thorough consideration of this law, and the, the eventual fruit of having this law, because Hong Kong waited 23 years for its, its own version of national security, and because of the kind of uh, uh, obstacles and difficulties that have been created uh, uh, artificially, it has never happened. So how do you strike the balance between these two? Well, I think the, uh, the uh, Hong Kong, uh, really, uh, uh, majority of people in Hong Kong probably need this. Actually, as you said, this has been discussed for the last two, 23 years. <coughs> you really need a very uh, uh, swift and uh, quick decision to make it happen so that uh, a business come back to normal. Seven million mainland tourists come back to Hong Kong. And, uh, uh, you know, Hong Kong now, 80% of the uh, company listed in Hong Kong from mainland as well. So. So really, I mean, we want to see a normal prosperity and, uh, and uh, peace return to Hong Kong. As a matter of fact, I mean, for this uh, uh, deliberation and consultation, uh, in the last, uh, uh, you know, uh, several weeks, uh, there was already uh, over a dozen consultation meetings has been conducted uh, throughout Hong Kong and mainland and to really seek the opinions uh, of uh, different groups and uh, functions and All right. uh, uh, different groups, so so that I think it's already quite uh, well discussed. Yeah. Uh, of course, there's always room to improve, but sure. I think it's uh, you know Hong Kong needs stability uh, immediately uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, uh, U.S. Secretary Mike Pompeo said Washington is imposing visa restrictions on Chinese officials believed to be responsible for undermining freedoms in Hong Kong, and Beijing said it will retaliate. Uh, Mr. Wang, do we know more details, such as whom or when, or was it just a gesture of? Uh, intimidation. Does it make a difference if the law comes ahead of U.S. sanctions or after? Well, I, I really don't think, uh, you know, there's make a lot of uh, uh, sense to do that. Actually, probably it's more, um, you know, more public, public image to show their, uh, you know, their toughness on that. But as a matter of fact, there's already, uh, you know, 13,000 U.S. companies uh, based in Hong Kong. I mean, all those investment banks are there. You know, they're, they hire about 100,000 Hong Kongese uh, working there. So it's really a big, uh, all U.S. also have uh, several, uh, you know, b billion uh, surplus uh, with Hong Kong on trade. So, so there's a big, vast interest of, of U.S. Uh, interest in Hong Kong. I don't think that uh, uh, sanctions on Hong Kong or mainland is really good, good to the U.S. I think the business uh, community will certainly, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Wong, once again, because this has to do with Sino-American relations, do you think the United States is understanding how important this issue is to China? This is um, not just any national, any issue on Chinese policy, but really uh, a core interest issue, wouldn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's not a core issue, important issue to, to China and Hong Kong, but also to, to Asia, to, to, to to the region and to the world. I mean, also to the China and U.S. relations. Hong Kong is such a great, great bridge and, and, uh, and also uh, channels for China and U.S. relations. Hong Kong has been always a free financial center and also a, a big major U.S., uh, all the major U.S. companies are in Hong Kong. And also, uh, uh, it's also uh, a largely uh, um, always a main, maintain a good tradition as a, as a free uh, 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 port of uh, uh, freedom of speech and everything. So, so I think, you know, it's important that we maintain that. And, uh, and also the U.S. Uh, should not really do damage to Hong Kong, which I think it's really uh, bad for the U.S. companies and for the uh, rest of the world, and uh, including uh, people in this region. So we need to okay. see Hong Kong restore uh, peace and order immediately and the prosperity immediately. All right, we're going to leave it there. Many thanks, Professor Wang Huiyao, President of uh, Center for China and Globalization, and Chong Siu Wai, Senior Lecturer at Hong Kong Baptist University. We'll take a short break, and when we return, COVID-19 is ravaging the world's second most populous country. What's significant about India's fight against the virus, and what's being done to curb the spread?